on Trash Time, all you cyberpunks and retro nerds out there. I'm your host, Tommy the Hammer. Welcome back to my channel. Tonight we're going to be checking out another modern day cult flick. This one is called Dreaming Purple Neon. I heard about this movie about a year or two ago and the trailer looks fucking bonkers. I love modern day exploitation films, so I really can't wait to dive into this one. You guys know this routine. Check out that trailer. Peep that shit, motherfuckers, when we get back. You guys are going to know my opinion on Dreaming Purple Neon. Think you've seen it all? Think again. There's a new drug on the streets, turning average people into savage monsters. A new drug created by a madman who leads a cult of the damned on a bloodthirsty massacre of the innocent. Purple Neon isn't created in a lab. No, no, no. It is harvested in one from them. Dreaming Purple Neon. Okay, so I love independent DIY horror movies and you know cult films in general i like movies that um, are made with a lot of love and dedication for the subgenre be it you know horror or sci-fi or action or adventure anything like that um, i can really get into a below the radar director that uh, wants to bring his vision to the screen um, but with a movie like Dreaming Purple Neon, I feel like the director's heart is in the right place, but the budget and overall execution just simply isn't. Um, the movie begins with a lot of old school grindhouse sentiment, and I can appreciate that. I love movies of that genre. Um, but after the initial credits, and once we get into the actual film, uh, there's a lot of things going on that I just wasn't keen on. This movie looks like it was filmed on a high-def camera, and that's about it. There's no visual flair to speak of. A lot of the actors themselves, eh, they carry the lines well enough for a low-budget movie such as this, but at the same time, they're not very interesting. The dialogue um, is written in a very preposterous and ridiculous manner, but there's no jokes, no fun, no over-the-top zaniness that a lot of Grindhouse movies that you know we all know and love um, execute with precision and craft. Uh, sure, there is a lot of gore in this movie. So much geysers of blood, a lot of flesh being stretched, heads being decapitated, people getting stabbed with knives and fucking you know, machetes and shit like that, guns going off, um, you know, it's a fucking mess. Uh, but those moments are kind of fun. It kind of reminded me of an old school independent horror movie called The Burning Moon, one of my favorite filmed on video movies. Uh, but this film right here does not execute it nearly as well as that film. If I could compliment this movie on anything, it would be its overall soundtrack. One thing that I thought was kind of grating on the nerves with old Dreaming Purple Neon here was its runtime. It goes for almost two fucking hours, and I'm sorry, it's like I said earlier, the biggest fault to this film is, you know, the overall execution. When you don't have the production value and, um, you know, I hate to say it, the craft to warrant two hours, then most of it becomes a slog. The main characters of this movie, they kind of bumble, stumble, and tumble around every scene like a bunch of unsuspecting goobers in a haunted house. Each scene is presented like, oh, look at this grisly atrocity, oh, look at this grisly atrocity, and there's no, you know, zest to it. That's, you know, it's boring. But I don't want to rag on this movie too much because I do appreciate the dedication that went into it. I'm sure there was a lot of long, fun nights behind the scenes with the cast and crew and the special effects artists where they're having a good time. And sometimes I feel like when you make a film and you're in the trenches and you're doing it yourself and you're getting down to the nitty gritty, um, the vision in your head is grander than the execution that comes out 
on the TV screen, or in this case, the flat screen. So the question is, is this movie worth your time? Maybe, maybe not. If you're with some friends and you've been doing some drinking, then definitely give it a look-see. It'll kill about two hours, but I don't know, even, you know, drinking, you know, all night throughout this entire movie, I found a lot of it to be kind of a chore to get through. So with all that being said, guys, I gotta give it a star count. Out of 10 stars, I could give the movie Dreaming, Purple Neon, maybe a four, four and a half out of 10.